Hey everyone, and welcome back to Koali Zoo. It's been 10 months that I could say that sentence. Um, so we're <laughs> back on this channel now, and I've got uh, two guests with me. This is uh, the wonderful Eben and Sylph. Hey guys. Hello, Hello everybody. Oh, so I guess Eben, Eben is uh, still eating <laughs> <Yeah>. something. <laughs> I was waiting for something yeah. there, but uh, nothing yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah, he's somewhere. All right, Eben, I'm are you here. there? Yeah. Okay, that's, oh, that's perfect. I oh, did great. say hello. <laughs> oh, it, oh it that's weird. I didn't through. hear anything. Oh, uh, well, I mean, well, it's, it's on my recording, so it's fine. Awesome. <laughs> we'll see about awesome. that. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you guys can see something uh, special in the background already, uh, something very oh. unusual. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing a little sketch. Uh, for those of you on my channel, you know, I've, I've been doing that quite sometimes. Not often enough, to be honest, but uh, I just felt like I should do that. And uh, just to give you a bit of a background, um, even and I were discussing where to jump in into Kuali because, you know, Kuali yeah. is quite filled at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, we've uh, actually, the group of people that is in here is very much fitting to the build today, um, <laughs> simply because we are talking about uh, the macaques uh, as one of the two species I added today. Mm -hmm. uh, or re-edit, I should say. And the macaques have quite a history with Sylph. So yeah. uh, one of those animals Sylph brought in quite some time ago. Uh, so yeah, I was uh, trying to find a new location and we figured out that next to Lady's Temple on the left-hand side um, is still quite a big gap uh, in terms of what should go there. And so I did connect the Amur Leopard with the macaques to basically mm. have a transition from the land of the big cats into the mountains of Asia. Now, I think it really fits well in terms of species, okay. but also in terms of having then the pandas and red pandas and stuff uh, a little bit higher towards the mountains. Sweet. I mean, that, that all sounds really cool and all, but what I'm looking at right now is blowing my mind because it's uh, something completely new to me and really interesting. And I'm going to be very honest, I'm mostly just interested in that, the whole process of <laughs> yeah, this whole creative process. It's really cool. Me too. Like, I'm super jealous of the fact you're, that you're capable of doing this because, like, I have a, a drawing tablet for to connect to my computer and I bought it specifically for stuff like this. And I haven't been able to do specifically this kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm really jealous right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, this I, I also use my uh, Wacom tablet yeah, for yeah. that. Um, and it's, it's quite a joy to do that once you die. I've, I've also shared some links with you guys in terms of uh, if you want to learn that. There are some cool tutorials online. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, really, it's really nice because you can really just grab a screenshot, you know, from the game and then start doing it. It doesn't even have to be like 100% accurate in terms of perspective, you know. This one is, is quite okay, but of course the perspective is a little bit off. But, you know, also I was doing some mini macaques and uh, a leopard here at the end, <laughs> just like for reasons. <laughs> it doesn't matter anyways. But you know, I just did it. Oh, uh, I so would, I would pay for leopards to lie down like that. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> this is this is one of the biggest uh, complaints I still have about big cats. Like most of the big yeah. cats are beautifully done in this game, but uh, the animation of lying down on a log is like so weird because if you would take the amount of times a cat would lay down like that versus mm -hmm. the more likely standardish would like have a hanging hanging leg or something i think it, it wouldn't do the in-game one maybe once out of 100 times and 99 times it would most likely have hanging down one one or two legs you know yeah. whatever mm. <laughs> <laughs> sorry i was just interested in how you were doing that bridge as well because i think there something interesting occurs now that we can see what your mind was thinking of building here because normally when you watch a time lapse like this uh, you just see, you know, what happens in game. You don't see what you're actually fantasizing about in your head. Uh, but with the concept art drawing, I saw you had that nice little curved bridge, and then you get into uh, Planet Zoo, and <laughs> you start uh, having to deal with the path system. Uh, I noticed that bridge shape getting a little bit different uh, once it got translated into the game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's, it's very fun to see that kind of side of the thought process. Absolutely. And I might just add that I was uh, using free build for the first time in Kuali. Um, you know, I, I finally, d you know, fell down into this rabbit hole and I will <laughs> not get out anymore. Uh, you know, this w wouldn't have been possible without free build, honestly. Like, it's just such a oh, great addition to the game. Uh, and I wish, I know it's impossible, but I wish Frontier would just like take that mod and bring that in just like you know, as City Skylines would do it. Mm -hmm. That would be straight away one. I think it's, you know, it's nearly as powerful as Move It is for uh, City Skylines. And I guess uh, yeah. for those of you who know that 
Cities, Guardians and Move It, uh, you know how powerful yeah, that is. Yeah, I, I think I think that's very fair. It's really great. Yeah, it's it's one of like I could never go go back at this point. No, <laughs> it's just, really hard. I'm just like yeah. Yeah, so maybe. maybe I should add a couple of things uh, to the, to the sketching process and the idea behind. Like, um, I'm I'm very happy that you guys like the sketch as much as I do because uh, you know, even though it has been a crazy time lapse, these things take time. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it always looks like super straightforward and stuff, but this this drawing concept art took me about an hour to do, um, which is fairly decent though but um still there is a couple of you know breaks in between that i did cut out where i'm you know trying to visualize what could work together because we have one specific thing about this area and this is going to be more or less like a little dead end um and i wanted to make this really feel like a destination to go you know mm -hmm. that you have like a little um way to to go into an area that really makes sense to go there that you have a benefit from actually going there and then going back you mm -hmm. know and this is why i tried to set this whole area out as like almost like a little uh, you know uh, party plaza or something where uh, you know maybe even if that's a village the whole village uh, kind of uh, parties would go on and so on this is kind of the idea and then this big area is equally the uh, biggest area in terms of viewing the two animals you know from both sides um, and this is what this bridge over here is leading into right oh that makes sense also i, I love the way that you're building this bridge and, and also covering the paths to make this whole thing a bit smoother it's not overly yeah, complicated exactly. but i love the way that all the wooden pieces are coming together i'm also quite yeah. again i'm again jealous that i absolutely suck at like doing these curves by hand and you just you just la 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 <laughs> do it like it's like it's the easiest thing in the world and i'm sitting here and i'm like every time i do that i fail <laughs> you're doing it so well yeah yeah it's very smooth it, it really came together quite nicely yeah also you will see we'll have a um yeah, kind of nice little uh bridge system almost like if if we have the real time part you'll see that i set it mm -hmm. up in a way that you can look through three bridges in a, in oh, a way nice. so kind of have this mm -hmm. little um creek going down and i think it looks re really cool with the different yeah. heights and so on um giving you more or less the feeling of going into the mountains you know mm. yeah I think it very much fits the Japanese aesthetic of the hill build as well. And I can I can definitely see with the rock work, but also the creek going through it and even the bushes. Everything really does resemble a Japanese garden. It's very reminiscent of it. So uh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I took quite a lot of inspiration from obviously Pinterest. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. But this is kind of the, the number one source to go. And I, I was looking up uh, quite a lot of things also from Fuji Mountain uh, with a couple of little villages um, on, on, you know, the lower lower side of Fuji Mountain, for example. And mm -hmm. um, I, I tried to also mix some general Asian styles in here as well. So it's not like 100% Japanese inspired, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I really try to keep that the main theme going forward and then also mix in some other aesthetics because we are well basically with quali is like polynesia um mm -hmm. so i think it's, it's fair to mix them in a little bit more oh yeah i totally i think the the best possible result would probably be you know not a perfect japanese theme uh but what japanese would look like uh designed by indonesian consultants and the like uh yeah. which i think will definitely be a bit more of a mix of things plus i think you typically tend to get this whenever you build a style somewhere else in the world uh, because, um, you know, materials are different. The types of wood that you find somewhere are different, the types of stone, and you notice those in the textures and the way that buildings are built. Um, so you'll always find that it's a, it's always a bit of a blend with local architecture as well. And it's also like exactly. everyone has its, like every area in the world has its own building techniques and like you'll, you'll probably try to emulate you'll see oh we need to build something like this but you wouldn't build it in the traditional way it's built you're just building yeah. it the way you're used to building things so that yep. yeah, exactly. is also a big influence i really love where this is going though same yeah and I must say also, um, and I think that was the only chance I was able to kind of make this whole thing. Um, I used a couple of blueprints that I initially built for my summer lake two and a half years ago. So it's quite <laughs> as, it's quite some time ago. And it was relatively fascinating to see that there weren't that many pieces um, that I needed to replace or so. I, I really feel like we got a great new 
you know, sets and stuff. But especially for the Asian architecture, we already had some yeah. absolutely decent pieces. Mm. Um, and I didn't really need to change that much. Um, a lot of detailing, though, has changed quite dramatically. Um, and I repurposed all of the buildings. Um, so, you know, I m mostly just used some of the, uh, you know, kind of bodies of the buildings, not more. But uh, it yeah. really helped me to, you know, have some boxes to plan this out and then yeah. go from there and just kind of add to that and that was really good yeah i can because really I, imagine because that was really something i was very happy with in the past so why not use that you know yeah exactly <laughs> like i for for saint reginald zoo i went back into a file that was like i think a year and a half old and there were still things in there that i was like oh cool we can still use this this still looks decent enough <laughs> It's insane yeah, how, how well everything like keeps up in this game. Also, that yeah, reminds me of sometimes you build things and it just doesn't really work out where you think it would. Oh, yeah. uh, but it's always good to hold on to those buildings because you'll never know, you know what you'll be working on in the future. And suddenly that thing fits in very well somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. And this is one of the, um, the the funny case about my Summer Lake Zoo is that I lost the save file of that, but because I have shared that already in the Steam Workshop, I could download that myself. <laughs> that was very helpful indeed. I'm starting oh, to one. use the Steam Workshop as like my unofficial backup system. <laughs> yeah, really. It, it's, it's really good. Because it's so, it's so easy to do and I'm like, I'm just going to upload this because I know myself, I can lose this, my game can crash. Let's just do this. So yeah, yeah. it's a good makes tip. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it totally makes sense. It, it's really, really, really good. Um, yeah, and on the other hand, um, as I told you guys already, but the viewers obviously don't know, the time lapse will end in a couple of seconds, uh, and then we will go into the real time part. Um, and I would, you know, from like a, a, a very <laughs> subjective estimation, I think the time lapse covers around twenty percent of what I've done, and the other eighty percent will be revealed now in. The oh, real time wow. So basically, uh, we can keep on talking, but while we do so, I'm going to send uh, uh, you guys, or actually, I'm going to start sharing my screen of okay. the game. Okay, you, gonna... you got me excited. Now I want to yeah, see Yeah, 20%, you're doing. That's, a, that's a big promise. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I mean... Um, but on the other hand, it's, Sylv, it's Rudy, like... This yeah, is yeah, yeah. I, I don't him. doubt it's, it's going to happen, you know, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> it's certainly a precedent. I remember that Rudy said, oh yeah, I'm going to make a simple, straightforward habitat. And I was like, no, no, we're not having this. We need to have a full-on Rudy habitat from you. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Well, I guess I, I guess that's what happened. Um, so tell me, guys, if you can see already the screen. Ah, yep. uh, yes. All right. So I'm just going to start my recording, which I just did. Um, so you guys also should now see the screen. Um, also, what is very interesting, we have to keep it on pause for the moment. I finally found out to why it is. I'm just going to unpause a little second so you can see. It's quite laggy, though. It's still somewhat okay. So you can see the Amo Leopard here in front of us moving. <laughs> 9 uh, FPS is, is definitely yeah. what Planet Zoo players call somewhat okay, but no other <laughs> gamer in the world would accept. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, so you guys won't be able to see the FPS counter. Those guys here do see it. And you can see it's <laughs> it's not going past 20 anymore. Uh, I found out what is the reason. So uh, just as a, you know, just a random side note, but um, I needed to replace my main board a couple of weeks ago. Oh. And my actual main board is still uh, in repairs, so I haven't got it back. And there is no intelligent overclock mode on my CPU. And so I can't throttle it how it should mm. do. Um, and since... Obviously, Planet Zoo is not really optimized for, I don't know how many cores my freaking CPU has. It's mainly optimized for, I think, four or eight. Um, you need the throttling. And I, since I don't have that, it really dramatically reduces the performance in these crazy zoos. Also, Yosemite is suffering from the same issue. But anyways, we can move around in pause mode quite nicely. Um, we are now on one of the edges of the zoo. I'm just going to quickly turn around so you see where we are. So oh, there's yeah, a couple yeah. of little elements, as you can see. Uh, this is mm -hmm. Sylph's hotel over here, behind those palm trees, just so you get an idea where we are. And we will now start moving up the hill. So first of all, you've got a nice little uh, viewing over here of the Amo Leopard habitat. And you can see uh, things change dramatically because you can't really see that much. Just for reference, there is the Ooh. Pagoda Tower. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool little uh, sight line. Oh, yeah. yeah, 
And then I also came up with this kind of stacking of stones. I saw that somewhere on Zoo Chat as kind of a nice way of making a support for bigger like logs and stuff what they can uh, climb right. but oh. just make sure that they can't jump out and i thought that is just kind of a nice way of doing it and also you see it quite often in japan and just in general mm. in asia that people yeah. kind of do these towers in like riverbeds or so yeah um, so yeah let's let's move up that are, are these stones secured to each other or uh, is that all held by the power of gravity no, I assume you you couldn't see that, but I assume that would be something like a pole or so in the yeah, middle. Right. I guess that would be that would be something that you should do. <laughs> Even though <laughs> these cats are pretty light, lightweight, but still, uh, I wouldn't count on that. Yeah, so, yeah. just in case. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. So this is um, mostly the stuff you saw from the time lapse here on the right hand side. Um, I just went in and got a little more brave with foliage. I, I just quickly need to give a shout out to Lider um, because Lider, a, a wonderful Planet Zoo creator, has been uh, building in my realistic zoo file recently and he's done a beautiful restaurant for me, but he's been so crazy with the foliage. Like really, he's been so brave to put so much foliage and made it all so lush and I thought you know what I have to become a lot more brave with that as well because it just <laughs> adds so much more this density and so on so yeah. I just did that over here yeah I agree this feels just right it doesn't feel like too much foliage honestly exactly, yeah, exactly. and it's it's nearly two times more than I would usually do and I've been adding and adding and adding and yeah so that's that's what this is so you can see I think I also like this sideline quite a lot because now oh, yeah. we've got that nature side hotel here in the back oh, yeah. it almost like kind of blends in perfectly so you, you don't really have this towering too much over it anymore and it just like gets this natural vibe that it should have also I love how it's just there in the shade let's just unpause for a second so you can see that Oh, I love it. I can really imagine standing here and, and see them strolling down here. And I think also that what this habitat also does is I think it provides a very nice privacy for the animals simply because they are lower down in this valley mm -hmm. uh, and they don't really see the guests too often. Um, and speaking of privacy, they also do have like a nice little area here as well to just nice. you know enjoy a little bit more privacy down here. Um, mm -hmm. A bit of backstage is covered over here. Uh, somewhere down here, I'm not sure where exactly, is Lady's Tiger Habitat. Um, oh, okay, okay. And so if we go over here, this is another, this, this is the, the third bridge. You haven't seen the creation of that one, but this is the wow. little one covering that. And if we go in here, you get this wonderful little view through the oh, creek. Yeah. Just gonna oh, yeah, unpause nice. this here. And you can see there is also, you can see some of the macaques even in the background. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> nice. Um, and you've got this little creek going down here. And on this left-hand side, you can see the, the pathway leading to the plaza. But you can't actually see the plaza. So, um, you know, you're yeah. still kind of asked to go up there to really see what's going on. Yeah, you're, you're really good at, like, selling the idea that there is something there. And that was in the previous shot. That was also very well done. Like, you know there's something there. You can see vague hints, but not enough. So it ne it really moves you further and like, okay, I, I need to go to yeah, the exactly. one because I want to see what's there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so all the way in the back, you can see there is like the big lock door for the, oh, for the Amy Leopard, um, somewhat hidden in there. So that's kind of a nice little detail as well. And if we go over here... Um, just through the bamboo, you can see there's also like another wall separating that area from another, so you don't look Sweet. down into the backstage. But this is one of my favorite areas now. Um, so this is the little Japanese village you're greeted by now. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. And you've got this little information kiosk over here where you could also buy some information about the animals you're going to see. You can buy some snacks if you want. And on the right-hand side, you even have like a new view into the... Uh, kind of area of the tiger, which you normally oh, nice. don't really see. Oh, nice. um, and so this is from this hill up here. And I also did some uh, custom cobble, which might also not help with the FPS though. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, oh no, no. My <laughs> Planet Zoo goes slow because I don't, I'm not able to overclock my main board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally yeah. not because you're making Just cobblestone looking for excuses. using eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. No, this is <laughs> I mean, this is the reason we can hardly complain to the developers about the FPS exactly. counts because, yeah. you know, <laughs> sometimes no, really, you do it really to can't. yourself. <laughs> they are watching this and they're like, we gave you X as like a small little thing to use, not <laughs> yeah. to put thousands of them. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, but well, that's that's what you do with this, right? Um, <laughs> this this over here is going to be the transition. Honestly, though, I haven't done too much with it. Yeah. This is going to be the the way that goes back to the uh, central area. Um, yes. I did hide away the backstage though with a couple of bamboo things, and I think this is exactly the density that the zoo would go with yeah, as well. Exactly. Um, so you know, just like that. Uh, but we want to move up the hill a little bit more. So as you can see, this is the this is the bridge that you saw in the time lapse. But before uh -huh. we do so, I'm just gonna give you guys another view because that is the one I want to show you. So you can go over here. This is, by the way, the backstage access. Okay. Uh, oh, big, nice. big door. And then once you go up here, this is where you are going to go to a lady's temple. Um, and on the left hand side, you already get a little bit of a view into the macaque area. So not like, you know, not too crazy, but again, like another sneak peek of what you could be seeing in the back. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But since we also need to think about uh, disabled people and wheelchairs and strollers, very obviously, good, very good. <laughs> you know, we also have a, a different way of going here and enjoy this area, uh, where you can go into this pagoda tower and enjoy a little bit of a, you know food or whatever. Oops. Uh, what? Well, yeah, yeah. This is actually. Well, how's a wheelchair going to cross that, Rudy? <laughs> um, with a lot of speed. Uh, <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm going to like. Uh, yesterday I recorded. I'm stuck. <laughs> Wait, I'm stuck. I just can't move anymore. What you can just press e escape and then yeah, the I know, but you are. Ah, uh, this is just. So, it's so the explore mode is sometimes it's just a bit weird, but you know we're just gonna fly in here for the second. Here, there you here's go. a here's a funny thing. Yesterday I recorded with Wyatt and and just Goron, and he made something really cool, but he only had stairs, and I told him. <laughs> You need a slope here. Sylv is going to kill you if you don't have <laughs> one. <laughs> and now Sylv goes, uh, where's the ramp? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously you could cover that with like one of these rubber pads, you know, these, yeah. these yeah. kind of rubber exactly. things that you can Very go fair. over there. Um, and yeah, this is another nice little area where you have a lot of shade in here yeah. and you can just enjoy a bit of a view of the leopard um, or on the right hand side, you can enjoy the view of the macaques a little bit. Nice. Um, so that is that. And now we just take advantage of being quickly not in this mode so i'm just going to jump down mm -hmm. and switch back into the explore mode right over here and can see again a bit of cobble here and there <laughs> making, <laughs> making sure your fps is actually destroyed um you know you know you, with the free build you can just like put down a little piece of the cobblestone path and yeah i mean that would have been that. easy right <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it wouldn't have been as textured as the eggs that's are. True, so I, I can true. see the reason for the eggs. I but mean, I can, <laughs> I'm also, you know, a little bit apprehensive. Also, looking at the eggs, I think they're quite high poly. That's that's hundreds uh -huh. of eggs for a little bit of rock work. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's what you got to do to make it look good, right? Uh, I mean, we can always excellent. exchange them quite simply because it's just one building, okay? So you the can things just click we that do building for aesthetics. <laughs> Also a bit of a market feeling over here oh, if yeah. you want. Uh, just a little side note, you can recolor these vegetables, which is oh, really yeah. cool. And I especially oh. look for Asian variants and uh, specifically colored them. Like this is kind of a Japanese pumpkin version. Um, mm -hmm. And that is a Polynesian eggplant thing. Oh, that's really cool. So, okay. yeah, I just went in. I, you can't do this with uh, that one. The cauliflower is like what it is. But... Um, yeah, I, so I actually love that you can recall the vegetables. I had no idea. That's yeah, I, yeah. Well, I guess I, mean, I guess this, yeah, they are vegetables. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> we can we can have discussions about that, but maybe not today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you've you've been in the land of Planet Coaster for so long now, uh, mm -hmm. so I you're forgiven for not knowing all these cool new things about <laughs> Planet Zero. <laughs> <laughs> this, this yeah, is total... sometimes sometimes I uh, I look at this and I'm like, man, I have missed out on interesting developments. We have eggs and vegetables. I'm just wondering what kind of foodstuffs <laughs> we're going to find around the next corner. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, but uh, just to go on, we now cross the bridge uh, into the actual area where you have the best views of, uh, you know, the habitats so, so and telegram. just what, what we wanted to go for. So first of all, you get another really cool view, as I think, of the Amy Leopard over here. I'm just hitting play for a second again. So Look at that, beautiful 7 FPS. Oh no, it's 10. <laughs> <laughs> so what I, what I really like about this, and it's something that I hope more and more people are going to do, like for, for animals, um, there's a trend now in, in current zoo building where they mix between glass and mesh, because glass gives you the oppor opportunity to get real close and have like 
like almost touch the animal and mesh allows you to actually smell the animal which is something ah. that a lot of zoos are like doing lately because with glass that's often the case that you can't do that and the sound of the animal is also dampened um, right. with mesh that's not the case so I really like that you like did the switch between glass and mesh in certain places that's really. a that's yeah. a really interesting reason to go for mesh I, I thought you were gonna say uh, with mesh you can uh, take pictures of the animals without the the, the <laughs> glare of, of like any glass pieces between it. Oh, Which honestly, for me, when I come across mesh in a, in a zoo, is what I do. I stick my camera lens in there and start <laughs> taking pictures. Yeah, but yeah, to be fair, that, that's that's, that's what also you do. a reason. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's what you actually do. <laughs> But yeah, um, we also come up that hill. Uh, we've got some supports here for the bamboo, so it's not going oh, yeah. to grow overly crazy into that area. Um, we've got a nice little, uh, you know, lower fence that allows you to look into the wonderful nature of the area. Uh, the macaques can actually stroll around here if they want to. Uh, I actually needed to plas, uh, place some elephant grass down here so that they just don't go and become food. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh before, you so. before you continue, Rudy, You've, you've pointed these out like quite a lot already, but we never talked about them. I really love these small uh, manicured trees you have here. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. The yeah. round I love ones. Them. Yeah. I bet in, the, I, in Japanese, I suppose they would be called okarikomi. But um, it, yeah, same. It, yeah, exactly. I was thinking the same thing. It just slipped off my tongue. Thank you, Silk. <laughs> Okay, um, I, I, I better then tell, don't tell you how many pieces I... Those know, are let's the continue. Those are the birds, <laughs> though, berries, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. Quite some of them. <laughs> and now we are here on the little garden plaza. I really, oh, I really it. do love how that came together. Yeah, that looks amazing. Um, mm. I've, I've been brave with a lot of foliage. I used some of the stuff, I guess Mike did, but I also mixed in some other creations I had uh, for my Asian areas. And this is what I came up with. Um, and we've got like, you know, some... Also, this time around, I used... This bubble, you know, very good. To, I, uh, you know, I did try to do the other one, but then I was like, ah, I shouldn't. Um, so yeah, uh, this is this little area. We've got a lot of light strings, uh, you know, uh, hanging over here. I wanted to use all the Japanese and Asian lights and lampposts and lanterns and whatnot, but they're just too big. Like they're so yeah. big, and I was like, ah, that just doesn't That's work. Fair. So I, I used those. And it's not like Japanese like, people don't use these string lights either. It's, uh, it, I think it works. Yeah, exactly. I, I wish I had some of these, you know, are they called lampions or so? Um, the, oh, these yeah, the, kind of the uh, paper lanterns. ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, that would be that would be really cool, but they're like way too big. So yeah, we've yeah. got these little um, gazebos over here where you can, you know, take a seat. Uh, this one has like a normal bench because you can over here have like a wonderful view of the entire area and the, uh -huh. you know, whatever you want to see. And also this big wheel in the background. That we are uh, the Ferris wheel. To talk about. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Uh, okay, never mind then. Um, <laughs> another, he has know, big... had the chance to remove this from the file many times now. Uh... <laughs> so uh, yeah, we also have like a little bit of an in, you know indoor view of the aim oh, leopard because they can nice. come up here, and there's like the food trays uh, that you know um, can be uh, held here as like a little bit of a demo because the actual oh, yeah. area for them is lower down there um, to grant them all the privacy. So this is just like a bit bare bones, but intentionally. So mm -hmm. maybe that they can show some feeding times and so on up here. Um, mm -hmm. And the rest has gone on downstairs. So give them really privacy. And the approach of that was really to give them a habitat that is mostly untouched by the guest. Mm. So uh, yeah, this is like another little corner where you can have a have a seat and then you know get an even other view of this habitat. Like basically from all angles if you want. And now you have this bridge over here inside. You know I think this is also another wonderful little view over here. Yeah, I love it so yeah. much. There are and lots it, of really good sight lines in this build. Yeah, and it really gives you the feel of that you're moving higher, you know, because mm -hmm. you're almost like on eye level with one of the skyscrapers in the back. Uh, so it really gives you the feeling that you moved up somewhere. And I really think this is always important. Uh, you know, whenever you're doing hiking or so, it's so yeah. important to have these like places where you understand, oh, look what I've already done. That gives you mm -hmm. the bravery to continue. And I really love that. Yep. Lovely so yeah, let's let's quickly move to the other side before I, I'm trying to avoid looking at one certain thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> because there's something coming soon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
so this is not like a lot of little garden. And I imagine, you know, when you're up here with the kids, they might have a lot of fun running through these little, you know, gravel patches here and there. Um, and speaking of kids, we also have uh, a little bit of a, you know, education yeah. file over here. And I, I like tried these. my best to kind of cover that up and, you know, <laughs> make that accessible for the macaques. But, you know, um, this is just like a little detail. Um, and yeah, so this is then the wonderful new macaque oh, area. nice. I was looking forward to this. <laughs> I reused the old macaque building, as you can see over here. Good. Um, gave them a lot of uh, kind of uh, terraces and stuff that we can you know, go up and down. Obviously, they have a wonderful little pond in which they can nice. enjoy. I'm just going to give a uh, hit play for a second so we can oh, see the nice. waterfall better. There you go. Um, and yeah, just kept it very natural, you know. Um, and I used another little trick that, you know, I, I learned across the time, or like during the time of all the Planet Zoo uh, geniuses at work um, to create that feeling of eye level to just lower down the habitat yeah. here in front, yeah. you yeah. know. And then uh, just just make sure that when you're standing over here, you can see them sitting in the, in the pond uh, almost at eye level. Or, uh, you know, for example, that one over here, just grabbing some fruits. Yeah, I love it. And I really intentionally left this somewhat rural and bare bones and just didn't go too crazy because like most of the natural habitats um, I, I looked up for, um, you know, macaques are really exactly like that, you know, they yeah. have like a, like a pond or something. And then there's a couple of uh, like lush things in the background, but that's almost about it. There's yeah, like totally. nothing fancy. Um, and so I kept it exactly this way. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, they do uh, live in the mountains, uh, very exactly. rocky areas, and like yeah. to hang around uh, hot springs. So, yeah, I think it makes sense. Exactly. And so this yeah. is exactly then the view that you have over here. Um, really nice. You can see, you can almost touch the waterfall going down. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's like, like it's... Uh, maybe don't. Like maybe don't touch the waterfall because you'll fall in, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you are able to touch it from over here, uh, I would first of all worry about your hands in general. Um, but... <laughs> But yeah, so this is the this is the view into this habitat. You can see they can climb over, have some uh, enrichment pieces here as well. And yeah, Sweet. let's go to the last little detail. I can see also like education is put down all see, around here. Also, uh, shout out shout out to Frontier for adding a few more of these educational yeah. signs. I think I, we really didn't talk too much about it. Yeah, yeah. I only I only realized it like after they like two days after the uh, conservation pack release that they added like four of them, which I really love because these are in a very unique style and I just, yeah, I'm a big fan of them. Yeah, really. I, I also love them. I mean, it's super fitting, obviously here, especially uh -huh. with that little arrow pointing to the left because oh, that yeah. is where you just go. And then who, what they are talking about? Ah, yeah, okay, let's go over here. And then boom, you get this Sweet. view and you can actually see the leopard down there, yeah. you know? Um, Plus, these are small touches, but they're so important to make it yeah. really feel like a real zoo. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So this is really something I love. Also, this view over here is something I really dig because it, again, gives you that feeling of standing up high and, and seeing the stuff in the background. Um, but yeah, to not kind of make this awfully long, uh, we're just going <laughs> to go in because I talked to Eben, first of all, um, how we should go on. And, you know, I thought, you know, that's going to be quite a lot of work. So I, I, I'm not sure if I can do backstage and stuff as well. And Eben was like straight away, oh, yeah, I love to bring it all together. I love to do backstage. <laughs> I love to, to add some stuff. And I was like, okay, well, then let's do yeah, that and yeah we were, we we're talking about like yeah i i can you can you can do a lot of the concept work and and i can help you refine where we're needed um, okay which is which is like to be honest something that i also really envy i'm sorry this is an episode in which i'm super jealous of rudy <laughs> <laughs> but like you and and um mask bandit for instance you both have a very good eye for conceptualization but in these games like you're mm -hmm. really good at like mapping out how these things work and and that's something i i i get lost in details way too fast same same <laughs> and you are able to do these big areas like almost like with a flick of your wrist like hop, and it's there and i'm like I, I would spend months on this. Yeah. yeah, but then you go in and then you've got like a, I don't know, broken chopstick on the table or something. Uh, so that's what you do then. Yeah, that's uh, that's my thing, yes. Yeah. yeah. No, and, this really um, reminds me of the synergy, I think, that Rudy and I have always had on projects in yeah, this game exactly. or in Planet Coaster is that usually Rudy goes around and comes up with all kinds of crazy things. I'm like, oh my God, that's awesome. 
uh, and then I then I walk behind it and I clean sometimes the mess yeah. up. Uh, <laughs> start any that's really good everywhere. yeah i love yeah, that i love that it's really helpful yeah. yeah i really try to make it sure that we have already quite a lot of clean stuff in here and you yeah. can really go in and do your magic um but i couldn't resist to just you know put that <laughs> <out>. <laughs> nice <laughs> okay that's amazing oh my god and i'm under the bus oh. <laughs> wow <laughs> I want that logo. I want that logo. Can you send That's it amazing. to me? <laughs> yeah, of course yeah. I can. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. This is one of the best things you've ever made in, in this whole game. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I should just show you that sign instead of making this whole video. but uh... <laughs> <laughs> This is absolutely fantastic. I love it. <laughs> I think you have a new YouTube uh, icon. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> He's dying inside now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because <laughs> for those who don't know, um, in, in the Kuali chat, it happens quite often that either I throw Mike under the bus or Mike throws me under the bus <laughs> with all kinds of stuff. So this is, yeah, this is a perfect... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, well I also done. try to put that into the, the little punchline down here <laughs> absolutely well done Rudy well yeah, done. So there you go. <laughs> quite a little easter egg in here uh, <sighs> but yeah that's it I think you know for the for the end I'm, sh I'm just jumping out into the uh, stand up mode cam and we're gonna oop, this is the wrong button I wanted to disable <laughs> the HUD there you go uh, just to show you this area from above Sweet. Uh, because I think the footprint of it is um, almost not typical for me um because it's it's relatively okay, I guess, in terms of size. <laughs> you mean relatively small? Yeah. <laughs> no. It's not. It's I not mean, small. It's I not mean, small. It's but small it's... compared to the safari that you did. Yeah. Well. Okay. But like, <laughs> nearly everything is small compared to the safari I did. Um, <laughs> but to my defense, you made the safari even bigger. So. Yeah, you know, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. So this is the this is the area from above. Um, yeah, and I just quite like it. And also, oh, just man. for reference, because we haven't talked about that, um, it fits quite well with the backstage mm -hmm. that was already existing. So this, this pass over here was already laid out to be the uh, backstage area. So it, it just kind of That's organically um, just integrates into that. And uh, I assume it would go all the way down here. Yeah. No idea what you guys uh, had in mind for this area anyways, but uh, there's obviously a very good connection to this lower area down here uh, that has been created. So... I yeah. think there's quite a lot of good connections uh, to be had over here. Um, and at the same time, uh, the backstage is hidden quite well. Love so it. that was all uh, all I've got. And yeah, I'm going to put... I think I'm going to just zoom out here. Yeah, can we get the perspective from the concept art? Yeah, yeah exactly. Let's just oh, from this angle, try. I guess. Yeah, this is that angle somewhat, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty close. Really you can cool. uh, Especially in the layout and the way that everything is uh, composed, you can uh, really see it. Yeah, I'm just going to try to hover a little bit to the side. I think this is somewhat exactly like this. And I can also, you know, for the video reference, I'm going to add this uh, concept out to the top right now. Uh, so, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed that. I certainly had a had a blast finally back in Kuali. And I hope even uh, you're looking forward to your challenge <laughs> now. Yeah, um, I'll... I'll um, as, as we discussed earlier, I'll, I'll go through and I'll do some little refinements and some zooming up where I can. But this is already super cool. Um, so I think my episode will probably be out in two weeks from now. So look forward to that. Cool. So if some things to add. I mean, you're you're the Asian specialist here because you've been you've been <laughs> and, there for quite a while. And so. the I mean, uh, yeah, like specialist. like I said, I'm I'm a huge well nerd of Japanese architecture, but also uh, gardening. Uh, and I think this works very well, especially as a as a kind of you know Indonesian company doing Japanese architecture, uh, nice. and it fits very well into the park as well. So uh, yeah, really cool to see, and uh, I'm excited to see what Iman's going to work on. Yeah, same. And also just to you know put that into a bigger picture for the whole zoo. Oh my god, <laughs> it's insane! <laughs> Each time I'm zooming out, I'm like, what the? Uh. We keep saying this, but I'm pretty sure that we're almost there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think so too. But Very honestly, fair. for 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 the moment, you yeah, you can really tell. Like this is the only area that is somewhat, you know, empty. Yeah. empty. But the thing is, as you can see with these little green 
thingies. There is a, already a plan existing. Um, and same goes for that up, upper hill area. Yeah, and that's Mike, about it. Mike thinks he can do stuff over there. I'm fairly convinced that we'll end up just putting a lot of trees over there. <laughs> yeah, there's... Yeah. Also, there's not really that much left to be done anyways. I mean, yeah. we've... We've pretty much done everything you can, I guess, in this game. I mean, granted, no DLC is changing this entirely, but for the moon, <laughs> we're, I'm... we're saying this now. Yeah, we've done everything we can so far. Wink, 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 hoping that Frontier <laughs> gets the message. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next DLC adds dolphins. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, okay, we've to change everything. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, let's wrap it up over here. I, I really enjoyed doing that. I really hope you guys uh, had a blast with this little choppy tour of 10 to 15 FPS. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I hope to see you guys uh, soon enough. But again, uh, for the next episode, you'll be uh, pleased with an episode on uh, Eben's channel, and we make sure that uh, he's going to avoid as much buses in the next days as possible <laughs> uh, to make sure we have that episode ready for you. So, have a All good right. time, stay safe, everyone, and goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>